Welcome back to the Endocrine System on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to be discussing the functions of thyroid hormone. So we'll review how it's actually generated um, by the thyroid gland and all the steps leading up to that, and we'll go over its functions. But before we do that, I just want to go back to the previous slide, which is what we covered in the previous video, which was all about growth hormone. And I highly recommend that you do go back and watch that video because what we're going to see is that the functions of thyroid hormone are very, very similar. Okay. Um, they overlap significantly, almost completely, although there are a couple of differences. But growth hormone is going to have a very similar effect on the body as thyroid hormone. So thyroid hormones are obviously made by the thyroid, but how does the thyroid make them? Well, the hypothalamus, as we saw up here, makes hypothalamic hormones, and one of those is TRH. This is called thyrotropin releasing hormone, TRH. Now the hypothalamus generates this and puts it into this network of blood vessels, which is the hypothalamic hypophyseal portal system. So that TRH will then travel all the way down here into the anterior pituitary gland, which is shown right here. And TRH stimulates the anterior pituitary to generate thyroid stimulating hormone, which is abbreviated TSH. It's also worth mentioning that thyroid stimulating hormone is also termed, let me actually type this, thyrotropin, thyrotropin. And that's actually where this TRH gets its name, thyrotropin releasing hormone. It's stimulating the pituitary to release thyrotropin. Although typically when you look at this in any medical context, they usually just say it's TSH or thyroid stimulating hormone. Now thyroid stimulating hormone, when made by the pituitary, is released into the blood, that is the general circulation, where it circulates throughout the body, but it really just has one main area where it causes an effect, and that is the thyroid gland. So when TSH comes over here to the thyroid gland, it stimulates the thyroid to make a couple of hormones, and these are collectively termed thyroid hormones, and those are T3 and T4. I talked about these thyroid hormones in a, in a previous video, and I highly recommend you go watch that because it is a fairly complicated process, but it does tend to be discussed in most anatomy and physiology courses. However, what I will say here is out of T3 and T4, T3 has by far the most uh, biological activity. T4 is not as active, uh, but it makes both of them. It actually makes more T4 and less T3, even though T3 is more active. And then normally what happens is T4 is converted to T3. But in any case, these are our thyroid hormones, and they are released into the blood. And they're going to go to all sorts of tissues and exert their functions. Now, the overall goal of these thyroid hormones is going to be very similar to what we saw for growth hormone. Okay? The goal of the thyroid hormones is to provide adequate nutrients for ATP synthesis and protein synthesis. Okay? Protein synthesis is obviously what makes proteins. And in order to make proteins, you have to have a lot of ATP. To make one protein, you're going to need hundreds of molecules of ATP. And in order to do any work around cells, you have to have lots of ATP. And in order to make that ATP, you have to have nutrients. And so the goal of growth hormone and thyroid hormone is to get the blood loaded with adequate nutrients. And so what we're going to see is that thyroid hormones are going to have effects on multiple tissue types to get the blood loaded with those nutrients. And in fact, it's going to be pretty much the same as what we saw for growth hormone, adipose tissue and the liver. Let's look at adipose tissue first. So thyroid hormone is going to exert its effects on the adipose tissue, which is fat tissue. Body fat. And body fat is, of course, loaded with triglycerides, which are the storage form of fatty acids. So thyroid hormones are going to cause lipolysis to increase in adipose tissue. And so, of course, lipolysis is going to break down those triglycerides into individual fatty acids, which will then be released into the blood, and those fatty acids can then be used by all sorts of extrahepatic tissues. This just means that tissues other than the liver. Okay, so skeletal muscle, bone, the GI tract, brain, anything. Okay, so that's the first thing. Fatty acids are liberated from adipose tissue. 
But thyroid hormones will also have some important effects on the liver. And generally what they're going to do is the same thing. They're going to cause the liver to make more glucose by two mechanisms and then dump that glucose into the blood where the glucose can then go to all these tissues and be utilized. So the first mechanism is the liver has increased gluconeogenesis. So thyroid hormone stimulates gluconeogenesis by the liver. And remember, gluconeogenesis is where the organ makes novel glucose from non-carbohydrate precursors, like amino acids or uh, acetyl-CoA. It can do all sorts of things like that. So it makes that glucose and then dumps it into the blood. So that increases blood glucose and glucose availability. The second mechanism is you have increased glycogenolysis. So remember, the liver stores glucose as the polymer called glycogen. And whenever you need to increase blood glucose, that glycogen can be broken down. And that's through the process called glycogenolysis. So thyroid hormones stimulate glycogenolysis, which causes glycogen breakdown into glucose. And then that glucose goes into the blood where it can go to all of these tissues. Again, we're loading up the blood with all sorts of goodies, all sorts of nutrients that can then be used by all these tissues. And the two types of tissues that the nutrients come from are going to be adipose tissue and the liver. I need to take this, this bullet point off of there because that's only for growth hormones, so I apologize for that. All right, so now, now we're going to look at these extra hepatic tissues because these are the types of tissues that are going to be utilizing those nutrients. And I have skeletal muscle here and bone, but of course there's all sorts of other uh, tissues that are going to utilize these nutrients. The heart tissue, the brain, the GI tract, the lung tissue, everything's going to use it. So thyroid hormone is all about increasing nutrient availability, but thyroid hormones are also going to have other effects on these tissues very similar to what we actually saw in growth hormone. One of them is increased glucose uptake. So if we're loading up the blood with glucose, it doesn't do us any good if these tissues uh, don't have super efficient glucose uptake. So thyroid hormones will also stimulate glucose uptake by these cells, and the way that it does that is by increasing the amount of glucose transporters in their membranes. So more glucose transporters allows them to import more glucose in, and they can use that glucose to make ATP. So remember that more ATP to do work. And so some of that work could be protein synthesis, but we can't make proteins without amino acids. So thyroid hormones will also stimulate amino acid uptake. So if you have more thyroid hormone, you have more amino acid uptake by these cells. And this is most pronounced in skeletal muscle, which requires a lot of protein synthesis. So the ATP from metabolism, compounded with the increased amino acid uptake gives you increased protein synthesis. Okay, another thing that we're also going to see that is common between growth hormone and thyroid hormone is that thyroid hormone also stimulates increased bone mineral density. It's been shown that individuals who have hypothyroidism, which is a low amount of thyroid hormone for, by whatever mechanism, actually are at increased risk for osteoporosis. So even though thyroid hormone doesn't do this alone, decreasing the amount of thyroid hormones that you have will predispose you to bone issues. So thyroid hormones will also stimulate an increase in bone mineral density. And then also during puberty, chondrogenesis. Recall that bones grow in length by using cartilage. And so if you can't make that cartilage, you can't grow in length. So thyroid hormones stimulate that synthesis of uh, cartilage, and that allows the bones to grow in length. But that, of course, only occurs during puberty. But that's also kind of nice because we also have a surge in thyroid hormones and growth hormone uh, during puberty. They increase in their levels. Okay, So hopefully that makes sense. A couple other things about thyroid hormones. Uh, one, they also increase the overall metabolic rate. So what does that mean? Well, metabolism is just pathways. It's a bunch of enzymes that are catalyzing reactions. For example, if we're looking at the degradation of glucose into pyruvate, which is glycolysis, that's a series of 10 enzymes. And when we look at the rate of metabolism, that depends on how many of those enzymes we have. 
So this is a very abstract way of looking at it, but let's suppose out of glycolysis we have a thousand enzymes. Okay, we have a thousand molecules of the enzymes in glycolysis. Well, if we add some thyroid hormone, maybe instead of a thousand we go up to ten thousand. Okay, we have ten times the number of enzymes. Therefore, we can break down ten times the number of glucose molecules into pyruvate. So, kind of a simplistic way of looking at it, but that's essentially what thyroid hormone does: is it increases the amount of the enzymes we have, and that allows us to metabolize faster because we have more of them. It's kind of like if you had a bunch of workers who are building a house. You're going to be able to build the house faster if you have more workers. Right? Makes intuitive sense, hopefully. And by increasing the rate of metabolism, you increase the body temperature. So usually people who have hyperthyroidism, that is too much thyroid hormone, they have issues controlling their temperature, so their actually actual body temperature is a little bit higher than normal. And the reason why thyroid hormones increase body temperature has to do with the increase in metabolic rate. So anytime you catalyze these reactions, you release a little bit of heat. And one reaction doesn't release a lot of heat. It's a very minuscule amount of heat. But when you combine all of metabolism together, all those little bitty heats released add up. And so all that heat released contributes to body temperature. That's why we have a body temperature of approximately 98.6. So if you add thyroid hormones, you'll actually increase that body temperature. So we have roughly a baseline. So people that have hyperthyroidism, as I mentioned, their body temperature can actually be a little bit high. Conversely, people with hypothyroidism, too little thyroid hormone, can actually have a slightly lower temperature. So hopefully that makes sense. And then the final thing that thyroid hormones do is they exert negative feedback on TRH at the hypothalamic level in a similar way that IGFs did this with growth hormone releasing hormone in the previous video. So if there's a lot of thyroid hormone in the blood, it tells the hypothalamus, hey, we've already got enough thyroid hormone, so we don't need to make any more. So thyroid hormone will come back here and exert negative feedback and inhibit the release of TRH from the hypothalamus into the anterior pituitary. And that will drop the amount of TSH that's being released, which will in turn drop the amount of thyroid hormones that are synthesized and released by the thyroid gland. So hopefully this makes sense, and let's come back to the, the original goal of thyroid hormones. They're going to provide adequate nutrients for ATP synthesis and protein synthesis. And the way they do that is by stimulating the adipose tissue in the liver to increase the amount of these nutrients in the blood. And then thyroid hormone is going to stimulate other tissues to be able to take up those nutrients more easily, run them through metabolic pathways to get ATP, and then use that ATP to perform work like protein synthesis. So hopefully that makes sense to you. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In the next video, we're going to be discussing cortisol functions. Thank you.